to all the dispossessed youth of Africa for perpetuation of communion with ancestral spirits through the fight for African freedom and in the firm faith that the dead, the living and the unborn will unite to build the destroyed shrines. Hello and welcome, beloveds, uh, to another episode of Ask Dr. Mumbi. My name is Dr. Mumbi Saraki. How are you doing? How's everything going? I really do pray that you are well in all your ways, beloveds, and that you're moving into living life uh, truly on your own terms. Uh, thanks to every single person that is subscribed to this channel. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. It's absolutely free. Uh, make sure you check that you're still subscribed if you'd subscribed before and be sure to hit that notification button so that you find out every single time we upload a new episode thanks to everyone that emails us you can always email us um i mean we get some crazy questions sometimes so i even like i'm even resisting to say this maybe i'll create a separate email but for now uh you can email us ask dr mumbi um questions at dr mumbi at uh, dr mumbi at dr mumbi show.com and we usually pick the most popular ones that we get um every month beloveds but really um it's time to do some adulting beloveds and really really um take take your take spiritual responsibility for your own life now um a lot of people have been asking me about the you know blood sacrifice what is the purpose of the blood sacrifice why has this entire regime entire system run on the blood sacrifice system what's up with that um and we see it with the fact that the god of their age the one that they've put you know that is ruling this world is um jesus who is a sacrifice literally on the cross that's how they celebrate him i mean people even wear crosses and it's it's because it's all about this blood sacrifice ritual beloveds and many um christians don't get it i always wondered what do you think when you're drinking the blood of jesus and eating his flesh i mean what's that about have you ever questioned that that's a ritual and so and that ritual has been extended to so many levels beloveds where the highest level, which is in wizards, in your family sometimes, they'll put a spirit in a goat, then they'll invite you to go eat that goat, and then you'll be eating the flesh and drinking the blood of one of your own. I mean, the blood sacrifice culture is real, beloveds. And it has ruled for a long time, but it's like it, 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 it runs on borrowed energy. And so if you're running on borrowed energy and not the authentic energy, then you won't last forever. And that's what we've seen with this, you know, that's why this blood sacrifice cult is literally losing power. And that's why this matrix is falling. Because it was all built on other people's energies. Mainly the melanated people's energies without them knowing. But you see, the whole thing about the, 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 the ritual, beloveds, is because we all have life force in us, energy. And you see, we misuse this energy. So we don't really see the impact of how powerful it is. Because it's real. In the beginning was the word and the word was everything. They say the word was the, with the creator and the word was the creator. And so we have this power, beloveds, which is not just about speaking, but it's about speaking with a certain force behind it that is supposed to have the power to manifest realities, to change realities, to call magnetically pull into your life, magnetically pull into reality things, you know, from the unseen world into the seen world. But that has been misused so much and diluted so much by the fact that we speak a foreign tongue that has no power, that was created by those that borrow energy. So they had to make it a language of spells where you're literally, you know, they're literally getting you to booby trap yourself and give them your energy, like without even knowing it. It's crazy when you really go deep into it. But the whole thing is like, so each and every one of us has energy. Each and every one of us has a life force. And with this life force, depending on where you are spiritually, you can propel yourself 
along a certain path, you can pull things faster. So when people, you know, say, you know, sacrifice a chicken or sacrifice a goat, what's literally you happening is they're using that little chicken's, you know, life force to achieve something for them, to propel something for them, to call something. They say to, you know, sacrifice a goat to God, you know, I mean, it's just not even going to get too deep into that. But all of that is to, you know, to take the life force of that animal to help you achieve a certain thing. So some sacrifice for power, some sacrifice for wealth, some even sacrifice just for health, some sacrifice for another, you know? So the, this life force may be used to, you know, sustain another person's life. And so that's why they sacrifice chickens and goats and if you see now with just how many, I think they say almost like a billion cows or something ridiculous like that are, are sacrificed daily across the world. You see, they all have life force. It's not just we're eating McDonald's and hamburgers and all these things. Imagine how many chickens are killed all over the world daily. Imagine how many goats are killed all over the world daily. What is happening? Who is capturing the life force of all these animals? The matrix is to keep everything as it is, but they have to, it's a, it's a death and destruction. And every single time they have needed to make a major push in the world, they have conducted a major, major blood sacrifice. World War I, World War II, genocide in Rwanda, and many, many others were major blood sacrifices so that they could push their agenda in using the life force of all those people. So... For many people on an individual level, like on a family level, when you use the life force of one of your family members, it's much more powerful in propelling you to a position of power. That's why if you look at most politicians in your countries, etc., etc., there's always some son who died just like that, father who died just like that, you know. I mean, and also we see it with the celebrities because they use the life force of their life members you know, of their, their, yeah, their, their family members, I should say, to kind of propel them to another level. And so at a certain point, you can't use your own energy because your own energy will take you here, but Babylon wants you to go like this, to become a star into the stratosphere. And so that's why, and that's why they continuously, if you look at the celebrities, and so many videos have been done on this, beloveds, but if you look at the celebrities, I swear every single famous person out there before they made it super big either their mama died look at kanye you know family died in weird circumstances sister died and and so this helps to propel them they use that energy to propel them that life force but that is all borrowed and there are consequences to doing that beloveds massive consequences and that's why we're about to see sugar hit the fan literally Let's take a short break. We'll be right back. Welcome back, beloveds, uh, to Ask Dr. Mumbi. My name is Dr. Mumbi Saraki. Really do pray that you're, you're well. I hope you've liked the video, beloveds, and shared so that this word can, you know, continue to, to, to ride those YouTube algorithms. Thanks to every single person that has subscribed to the channel and who supports us on the Dr. Mumbi Show's spiritual Patreon family where we share a lot more um, information. I think they're like five, ten shows ahead. Uh, so today we're talking about blood sacrifices you see it's they say this is a vampire system i mean the reggae artists have been saying that for ages the reggae pro they're not even artists they're prophets beloved um they've been really telling us you know it is a it is a vampire system babylon is the vampire beloved because babylon needs the blood sacrifices of others not just so they can eat the flesh but so that they can take the energy of that and that's why we've got we've gotten into this i mean everything has been done like with perfect coordination with perfect plan 
That's why they stopped so many of us from being in control of our own food, where if you wanted a chicken, you were directly connected to the killing of the chicken, etc., etc. So you do it kosher if you were, if you were eating those things, you know. Um, many people want to argue whether we were um, vegetarian-based or not plant-based. Uh, for the majority, we were, but we would do, you know. And now when I think of how my grandmother used to explain how they used to eat meat and stuff, um, you know, they'd sacrifice one goat and the whole village would eat it. So it was probably a ritual that they were all partaking in, that they didn't know. And everyone would get like a tiny, tiny little piece. But now people will go and order a kilogram of meat here, you know, roasted meat here in Kenya, Nyama Choma, that's what we call it, and everywhere. But it's like we've been slowly sucked into this blood sacrifice culture, beloveds. And you see, you can't take the life force of something and there be no consequences. That can only happen for a short time. But eventually, you're going to have to pay back. It's like borrowing money and not owning it. And that's what Babylon has done. Babylon has borrowed the life force of so many beings, beloveds, um, to create this matrix and try and keep it going. And it can't survive like that. And the reason they do that is because they have no life force of their own. And that's something we've never been told. They have no life force of their own. And so they have to survive on the life force of others. They don't have, they're, they're not the dominant rulers, they're not the dominant beings on this planet. But because of all the blood sacrifices that they're continuously doing, they're able to use that life force to always put them on the top of the pyramid. And I don't know if you guys have ever seen this image of like slaves kind of holding us this ta up this table and then Mzungus around it kind of um, deciding what, what's happening in the world. Literally, that's what is happening. Like the ones who don't have power are using and siphoning off the power, the ones who do have power to run the world. And that's what's happening on a massive scale. But even on an individual scale, right? if you look, you know, rather... If you look at um, societies and communities and the fact that everyone has to be, the, all your major CEOs, beloveds, all your major politicians, all your major media people, sooner or later, they have to make that blood sacrifice in order to kind of enter the field, but to use that force because they need to get somewhere, you know, like if you were to do it in your own power, you'd have to either refine yourself to a certain level or you'd have to just work with the energy you have. But now when you use the energy of departed loved ones, you're able to use maybe their years plus your years, you know? Some use blood sacrifices to extend their life. So they, that person had 20 years, it will get, kind of give them 10. I mean, the, you know, it's, it's so deep, beloveds. I don't want to lose people. But, and, you know, and some will use it just the life force of the child to use that, that, that the force of that child to kind of double them up. So they're walking with two forces to help them in their political, you know, what are business careers, etc., etc. And that's why people usually sacrifice their own children so that they can almost be like two humans instead of one. I mean, I don't know if you get it. I'm trying to say it in the most basic and simple way. And so you'll look, I mean, there's nothing to be admired, beloveds, about those in power right now because the societies are everywhere. The blood cult societies ruling the world. They have lodges in nearly every single country. And it's all like because they're using this extra power, they've been able to hoodwink the people. But that is over now. That time is done. And, you know, it's payback time. Because all you can only borrow. It's like when you go to the bank, beloveds, you can only borrow for so long before you have to start paying back. And it's payback time. They've over-borrowed. They've over-loaned themselves on the energy of others. And now that's up. Which is partially why we're seeing the world going into lockdown and everything happening. And apart from the whole blood sacrifice... There's also just the manipulation of our mental energy that also makes us prisoners. But they're able to keep... The, the world is run on blood, blood lovers. And you see, as a highly supreme one, 
You don't need to sacrifice no one to get the power of two, three, four, a hundred, a thousand. It's a higher level magic. But you don't need no blood. That's the lowest. The lowest level is this, is this blood sacrifice reality, beloveds. Like you don't have energy of your own, so you have to go get someone else's energy to achieve your agenda. But those who are the original ones, they're back in their full power, even with all the confusion, beloveds. And that's why now, because so many of us are back in our power and we're reaching a certain tipping point, the blood sacrifices of others just doesn't have energy anymore to shape the world, which is why we're seeing such an aggressive um, you know, experiment being carried out across the world, such aggressive censorship, etc., etc. It's because the blood sacrifices don't have power anymore. Because those who use the ether, the true spirit of the Most High Creator, which is within, are back and they're making moves. In a twinkle of an eye, this world will change. Tu copa moja. Thank you.